Hello Grade 7s! The following slideshow is compiled with many different images that represent the Haida Gwaii Nation. I will be narrating some history of the Haida people, including the significance of the totem poles. At the end of this slideshow, I want to read to you a legend. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy my show. Haida Gwaii is located 100 kilometers west of northern coast of British Columbia and is an isolated group of over 200 islands. Those islands are both large and small. The islands are exposed to Pacific Ocean weather systems and it bears the brunt of the strongest winds in Canada. The waves can reach up to 35 meters and they get 4 meters of rainfall a year. The east coast of these islands has a gentler landscape of sheltered inlets, islands, lowlands, and plateaus. They get an annual rainfall of about 80 centimeters. The island shores are bathed in nutrient-rich waters of the North Pacific. There are extensive seabird nesting colonies, large number of raptors, and many, many, many salmon spawning streams of all sizes. The Haida people have occupied Haida Gwaii since time immemorial. The traditional territory encompasses parts of southern Alaska, the Haida Gwaii Islands, and its surrounding waters. The pre-contact population was in the tens of thousands and several dozen towns dispersed throughout the islands. During the time of contact, the population fell to about 600. This was because diseases were introduced including measles, typhoid, and smallpox. In December of 2009, the British Columbia government officially changed the name of the islands from the Queen Charlotte Islands to Haida Gwaii. This was part of a historic reconciliation agreement between the province and the Haida nation. Today, Haida people make up half of the 5,000 people living on the islands. Haida reside throughout the islands but are concentrated in two main centers, Old Masset at the north end of Graham Island and Skidigate at the south end. Beside these two communities, there are many 2,000 more Haida scattered throughout the world. The Haida Nation collectively holds hereditary and aboriginal title and rights to Haida territories and the cultural and intellectual property rights of the Haida Nation. What this means is that no one can take the totems or dig up graves and put them into museums or claim them as their own. This is the Haida Nation Council Flag. All people of Haida ancestry are citizens of the Haida Nation. Every Haida citizen has the right of access to all Haida Gwaii resources for cultural reasons and for food or commerce consistent with the laws of nature as reflected in the laws of the Haida Nation. These are the islands of the Haida Gwaii. When you visit the Council of the Haida Nations website, you will find their value statement. This is what they say. Our culture is born of respect and intimacy with the land and sea and the air around us. Like the forests, the roots of our people are intertwined such that the greatest troubles cannot overcome us. We owe our existence to Haida Gwaii. The living generation accepts the responsibility to ensure that our heritage is passed on to following generations. I believe it is important as Canadians to understand and share our history and the culture of the country we live in. Over the next few slides, I'm going to talk about the significance of the Haida totem poles. Totem poles have been around for many, many centuries. The totem poles themselves last only about a hundred years before they begin to disintegrate. Totem poles were originally smaller, but increased in number and size during the fur trade to earn more money in trading villages. In the central coast of the Haida, there are totem poles which reach over a hundred feet tall. 
Ceremonies of gratefulness and respect are held in honor of trees that are chosen to be carved. These are performed before the tree is harvested. These ceremonies continue today and are normally held in the summer. Carving poles were discouraged by missionaries because they believed that First Nations worshipped them. Totem poles are visual representations of kinship, depicting family crests and clan membership. The images on the totem poles tell stories of each family. The totem poles show the crests of the family that the pole is being carved for. Totem poles are made from red cedar, which is rot resistant. They are normally red from the top down. Over the last 200 years, the designs have been changing. The Haida watchmen were originally the uppermost image on the totem pole. They represent supernatural beings that give warning when danger is lurking. The guardian watchmen protected the land and sea from harm as well as the families the totems overlooked. This is the Raven's Tale. Long ago, no divisions existed between humans, animals, and spirits. All things of the earth, sky, and water were connected, and all beings could pass freely between them. The Raven was a trickster full of supernatural power. He stole the sun from his grandfather and made the moon and stars from it. The raven created lakes, rivers, and filled the lands with trees. He divided the night and day. He pulled the tides into a rhythm. He filled the streams with fresh water, scattered the eggs of salmon and trout, and placed animals in the forests. The first human was hiding in a giant clamshell, and raven released them onto the beaches and gave humans fire. Raven then disappeared and took with him the power of the spirit world. That is just one oral traditional story that's been passed down through the generations of Haida to explain the creation of Earth. I want to thank you for listening. I also want to thank all of the sources and resources that I got these photos and information from.